Hi, I'm Heather Richmond. Welcome to my channel. Thanks for stopping by. I come to you in my workout gear, though I have not had a workout today. Uh, I found a place to sit. My daughter today has destroyed something in every room of the house and my husband just got home from work and we're trying not to make eye contact. Today we're talking about food dye. Yay! I'm coming at you as a mom, a registered dietitian. This whole subject is something that we've had to focus on because of one of my children. I haven't scoured through every bit of scientific study. What I have done is gone through a lot of abstracts, a lot of summaries from studies, reasons behind some legislation. I try to stay away from the far alarm whistleblowers. I don't really pay attention to their websites much. I, honestly, a lot of the resources that I use are government funded, so if that's an issue for you and you are anti-government for any nutrition information, there comes a point where you have to trust somebody. Somebody will be funding the study. Studies don't just happen. Scientists are paid for their research. The U.S. government is somewhat unbiased when it comes to things like food dye. I don't think they're all out to get us and poison our food supply. I use the National Center for Biotechnology information a lot. There are currently nine food additive dyes that are acceptable in the U.S. I'm not going to name them. I will list them down there if anybody's interested. They are in anywhere from shampoos to shower gels to your kid's food to your food. Early on additives were coal tar based. Now they're somewhat petroleum based. So some people are like, food dye causes cancer. Well, it's not, it's never that cut and dry. Food dye can break down into something called benzidine that is on the possible carcinogenic list for uh, animals and for humans, but so is deli meat, <laughs> so is alcohol. Uh, there's lots of things on that list that people don't necessarily shy away from. Where it hits home for us, when I was pregnant with Cal, Cal is my firstborn, drinking orange orange um, soda. Orange soda has all kinds of dye in it. I've noticed a pattern that every time I'd have the orange crush, I would be awake at night. I just could not sleep at night, and he would be going a mile a minute tumbling and tumbling and tumbling and tumbling. And I just assumed, well, maybe I was awake because maybe he was just excited because of, I don't know, soda, whatever. So it took me a while to start to notice this correlation between things that had dye. And it was any dye. He wasn't acting hyper necessarily. I just started to notice that he was acting different. He would be shaky, kind of irritable, and he couldn't sleep at night. So he would have fun cereal at his Nana Papa's house, and he would go to a birthday party and have, you know, Hawaiian punch, or we would even go and get some Slurpees or something like that. And I noticed he was having this, his leg would not stop shaking. He acted just jumpy. It wasn't hyper, it was jumpy. So I would look at research and things, and it would say the FDA has ruled it inconclusive that food dye causes hyperactivity in children. Well, one thing that you have to read further is that the studies, and I didn't do this but recently, because a lot of other people have asked me about food dye, and I know that as a family we cut it out a long time ago, but I didn't know what to tell other people. The FDA has deemed it inconclusive, and I respect that they've deemed it inconclusive because it is inconclusive. Because the studies that have been done on food dye, most of them that everybody points to within Europe, why Europe banned food dye is that food dye causes hyperactivity in children. I mean, you can't make that claim because he doesn't all of a sudden become ADHD and those symptoms don't stay. He becomes irritable and he can't sleep. It's very different, irritability and not sleeping. Those aren't even in the DSM-4 as a consistent uh, symptom of ADHD. So you can't make that correlation. But what was like Eureka for me is that anybody, the fact that any child had a reaction to food dye and it had listed in this study where it said that they couldn't link the two because the most common symptom of those who did respond to the food dye was irritability and sleeplessness. And that's myself and Cal. All of that to say, because it's not a part of your diet you have to have. Not only is it labeled, even color is labeled. It's like you have to say color, even if you don't say what color. You have to say you have to say color. It's pretty easy to spot when colors have been added, and it's actually somewhat easy to avoid. And it's not an allergic reaction per se. For a while there, I would put on his card at the nursery or whatever that he had an allergy to food dye, and that's not fair because somebody with a legit allergy, especially when it's anaphylactic level, needs to be taken seriously. So I stopped putting the allergy because it's not legit allergy. It's he has a sensitivity to food dye, and he'll be okay if he gets some. He was also being ostracized not intentionally but he would wait if I didn't pack him a special juice box or if I didn't 
bring him something. He had to drink water when everybody else was drinking juice. And he would go to birthdays and he would say, is there dye in that? Is there dye in that? And I just didn't want that on him. That's, that was too much pressure for him. So when well, he goes to birthday parties, he eats what everybody else is eating. He knows it's okay by me. He eats candy that his brothers are eating. So that's our personal experience. You might have a similar one. One thing I did do once the kids, once we had the, the three kids and I could actually test them, very unofficial study, as I would give them juice with dye and then I gave them juice with the same sugar content without dye. I did that multiple times with different products and I did find that every time um, Cal had somewhat different responses. He didn't have the exact same response every time, but the sleeplessness was the thing that, and he's already my night owl. So there are some studies that say if you're already one who's prone to being a little more excitable, a little more of a night owl, um, not a great sleeper, then, um, then really what dyes do is exacerbate those problems. It's one of those things that you really don't need to have a fight over it. If you think your kid might be sensitive to dye, then cut out dye. I'm gonna list um, some pig pigments that people can use safely, alternatives that either you can use when you are wanting to dye a food product or that you can look for in products. Uh, we've come a long way. There's a lot of things without dye in them. Don't snub your nose at a mom who gives their kid Hawaiian punch, okay? They just don't have the same convictions as you. I mean, they haven't had the same experience. I mean, I lived off of Diet Mountain Dew in college and that's like one of the number one things. Actually, the yellows contribute more to these symptoms than the reds. It was even a test question on my RD exam. It was true or false. Red dye number 40 has been shown to increase ADHD in children. Now, they didn't say symptoms. They said ADHD, which according to the DSM-4 <laughs> handbook, you have to say false to that question, and I, and I got it right. I would have to answer it the same way now. But can it cause irritability and, and sleeplessness in some children? Yep. You have any questions, please feel free to ask them. If I don't know them, I, I again, I'm happy to research anything for you. I'm excited because Beginner Bellies is back on track. So we're gonna have a Kickstarter here soon. If you have a farmer in the area who would like to partner with me, I'm trying to get my produce costs down. And if you're wondering what, where's the book? <laughs> I have to pay for the book. I decided to self-publish, and so it's somewhat on hold. I am changing a couple things in it because every time I think I'm done, God says, wait a minute, the Lord brings something else to mind, and I, it's kind of gone a completely different direction than where it started, and I'm kind of grateful for that because I like the shape it's taking. But, um, but I also have to have money to publish it. Have a great week. Subscribe if you would. Um